Good evening viewers, welcome to the first Gym Bros podcast of 2024. How are we doing guys? Good, good. Yeah. I genuinely Gosh. rolled into 2024. <laughs> yeah, rolled? A big rolled. Fatty. A big guy. <laughs> big. Ginger. Fantastic. Bastard. Fantastic. Josh, how are you? I'm great. Fantastic. Amazing. Really good. We've got a new Gym Bro joining us today. We have. Morgan. Hello. We have. Morgan. Hello. How are we doing? I'm lovely. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> That's because you sit next to him. He has been fed. You're quite all right. He what? won't eat you. Not yet. What are you looking at? You just called him a gym bro. He's not a gym bro. He is. He's just a guest. He comes to the gym and he's, a, and he's a bro. Around, he's a bro. He's a bro. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy now. Sit down. Shut up. <laughs> Carry so, on. So Carry what on. we thought we'd do is we... So at the end of last year, we spoke about what we wanted to do with taking the podcast forward. And one of the things that we decided on and discussed was bringing in some guests who have taken their either side hustle or their passion and gone through and made it into their full time career. So, Morgan, you've been coming to the gym. Um, I love your social media. I've been following it for ages. Love the content and stuff. And we thought you'd be an ideal guinea pig. To uh, come on, <laughs> you mean that's uh, the nicest one? Yeah, come on and tell people about your story, really, because I think it's it's quite an interesting story. I followed you for quite a long time through the, through your training and your coaching come and your to competing. Your house and and come to your house, the hooks outside your window, yeah. <laughs> leaves your Hershey's kisses on your pillow. <laughs> I wonder who laughed in there. Um, so yeah, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to get you on and for you to talk to the people and obviously you've got a really good social media following and tell everyone your story, literally how you started, what made you get into what you were doing and the challenges and stuff you were facing. So we're going to stay quiet for a change and we're going to hand the show over to you. That's why he's an honorary gym bro today. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> my name is Morgan. Um, I'm 24. I'm a online coach and content creator. Um, I'm now a full-time online coach. It started off with me just doing this as a little side hustle. Um, where, how far back do you want me to go to start? So I started following you, so I don't know what you did before, but I remember you were something, you were a footballer. Yeah. Is it semi-pro? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so I remember seeing content of you when you were a footballer. And then I remember seeing content of you when you were working part time and doing your coaching. Oh, okay. And then I followed your journey kind of since then. So let's go back to there. So let's talk about your footballing because I've seen some clips of you as well, and you were pretty decent to be. <laughs> yeah. Why did you stop footballing? Yeah. Which Why day? did you stop doing the football? Why? Yeah. Uh, I'll go into that one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, pretty much the same story as a lot of lads when they're younger want to be a footballer, professional. Um, when I was nine, I initially got picked up by Liverpool. I was on the books there for about 18 months. And I'm a Liverpool fan as well. My dad's a big Liverpool fan. That's why I support them. Uh, so that was literally like a dream come true, you know, when I was at nine. Okay. Got released from there. I remember uh, my dad crying when I got released from there. Yeah. Then a year later, I was at Stoke. So I was at Stoke from the age of 10 or 11. So I was about 16. Got released from there. And the main reason I was released from both of them was because a lack of aggression and I was always just pushed off the ball really easily. So that was for me where it started, was being weak, you know, getting pushed off the ball all the time, getting the piss taken out on me in school for being so skinny. I remember I used to fucking dread my birthday every year. Can I suck my kids to swear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking yeah. right. Every oh, year <laughs> I would dread my birthday diggings because my arms were so skinny and people knew yeah. they would target me even more and they'd put all their effort into it. And I could, the day after, mate, I'd come into school, my arms hanging off. <laughs> um, so that's where it started for me in terms of the gym. So I initially started um, and my love for it, basically just fell in love with it. Um, my confidence grew as a result of it. Um, and I think I've always had like a knack from the very start of being able to tell I'd watch someone and be like, there's no way he knows what he's talking about. Like, just bullshit. Do you know what I mean? You could spot it very easily. So my knowledge grew pretty quick. Um, and I had people asking me for the nutrition plans, training plans, stuff like that. And initially I was giving them to my mates, managers at work had asked for them and yeah. stuff like that. My barber I've give, <laughs> given me a plan to before. 
Um, so it started like that, and obviously when I remember like my first client transformation, I think I started charging thirty pound initially, um, and like the buzz you get from you're like yeah. I've helped someone do that. It was like it's fucking mad. So I went down the path of obviously pursuing that. Um, and now it's grown to where it is. To where you are, mm. are now, and you're a bit of a... You, I, I say you've got quite a good following. You've got quite a loyal following on social media as well. Uh, obviously, you're on TikTok and Instagram yeah. um, and this, that, and the other. And one, So you kind of... So I've noticed that you kind of specialise in like young guys, um, helping young guys to go through their, their transitions and stuff. What are you laughing at? <laughs> It's just got a dirty mind. <laughs> so, which I, which I think is good because I think, like your story, is not too dissimilar from my own. Why I found the gym, and probably like why you found the gym and why you found the gym. So mine was to do with like my asthma as a kid. So I couldn't do football and stuff. I couldn't play sports like that because my asthma was so bad. So I got into doing boxing, MMA, and weightlifting. And it was as soon as I started weightlifting that became physically strong and I learned how to control my, and that's what changed me. And I've stuck with it ever since. Um, so I think a lot of guys, like your story is very relatable. And I yeah. suppose you find a lot of your clients are coming to you with a similar sort of story. Yeah, I've got quite a lot of young lads. I think especially because most of my phone's on TikTok as well. Um, yeah, it tends to be younger lads. Um, but yeah, I think it is definitely relatable. Obviously, a lot of lads, when they're younger, want to be a footballer. Like in the UK, that's yeah. probably, other than nowadays, loads of lads want to be like old girls as well, want to be influencers, quote unquote. Yeah. But I think for the majority of lads, it is to be a footballer. I mean, I still got the piss taken out of me for it, for, <laughs> for it, <laughs> failed footballer. Um, but I'm happy with the way things have turned out. You know, yeah. I wouldn't say. I failed at life, put it that way. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. So when you were, so what made you decide, because you, were you working full-time or part-time and doing the coaching? So I was working, yeah, part-time. Yeah. I was working full-time. I'd work like pretty much throughout the summer. So yeah. it was at Alton Towers I was working at. Okay. Just as a barman. Um, and then I'd do my coaching on the side. And I set myself a goal. I remember initially, I was like, I'll leave when I get to 10 clients. Yeah. Got to 10 clients faster than I anticipated. And then I was like, right, I still want a little bit more security. Um, and then I think I ended up staying for another nearly a year before I eventually it got to the point mm -hmm. where I was like, the time I'm spending at work is time which I need to be spent editing, yeah. and, you know, replying to clients, that sort of stuff. Um, so that's when I eventually uh, just went, fuck it all in on it and when you decided to make that transition from going what what people would see as like a secure job to becoming self-employed what was kind of people's attitudes towards it what did you find i remember the um, most of my mates are supportive but there's a few i've got like quite a big friendship yeah. group and i remember there was one lad specifically who we're not really on the best of terms nowadays but we were in a group chat and i was taking the piss out of him for something just banter and he went in on me about like the fact I was posting on social media, coaching, everything like very, very personal stuff that you could mm. tell he'd been harboring for like a long time. It was to the point where you could scroll, like he just kept on going. Um, family and stuff have always supported me, my mum and dad. Um, so I've, I don't say I've had a huge amount of backlash, but you do get it. And obviously, yeah. being on social media, you are open to judgment. And yeah. so you get, I've had people make videos about me um, plenty of fucking times. But you find that, so that's another good thing because like a lot of people think that they want to be an influencer or even like from my experience, like having your own business. But then part of ha being on social media and having your own business is you become very accessible to the public. People will then judge you, but not even know you. Yeah. Um, so how do you deal with, with that? Because obviously you're going to get lots of positive and you're going to get negative. Like, is there any, like, things that you go through? Do you kind of just let it go over your head or...? It is very difficult. There was, I think this time last year, I had a guy who, he's got quite a big following himself as well, and he went for me. Like, was making, he's made close to 10 videos about me. Yeah. Really personal stuff going in. Um, and every other day I'd get someone tagging me in a video or sending me his video. Yeah. I've got him blocked now. But I think when someone does that, it is like at the time I was finding it hard to deal with. Yeah. And then you get the people who support him as well. You're reading the comments. Yeah, yeah. 
And yeah. but I, 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 again, to be fair, I, I remember seeing that, and I don't agree with bullying. If someone's got something constructive to say about you, as in maybe they don't think you're doing something right or they don't agree with what you're doing, then speak to you. Simple as. Don't yeah. speak to 101,000 followers and slate you. That's, that's just a girl's way of dealing with it. Yeah. Um, he, that I do, his... Yeah, I do remember seeing like your own followers sticking up for you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's good. You've got these people that they genuinely believe in you. They see worth in what you're doing. And they're prepared to take a stand for you as well as yourself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it can be... Do you think sometimes people do it to be controversial because they want to get the views and stuff now? I think that was why he did it. Yeah. Because I've seen he's done it about everyone. Like yeah. He's made compilations with not just me, even big people like you know James Smith PT. Yeah. There was incredible people I, I in know there. I know you're talking about. And to about, be honest, when he, about, when he yeah. made that video, that gassed me up more than anything else because yeah. like, you're putting me with all those people, I'm happy for you to yeah. put me in front of all those. But when it's about just you specifically, that's when it is a little bit like tougher to deal with. Yeah. And you think, like I always think, because obviously we're a, bit, we're a bit older, I'm old, you're old-ish, you're fairly old, you're young. So like... Fuck you, Grandad. Exactly. <laughs> So, like me and you, when we were when we were growing, when we were like your age, if someone had something to say, they'd have to say it to you. Yeah. They'd have to confront you, and, you though, and they wouldn't. Yeah. They'd bring it, eat them. Yeah. <laughs> Can we still roll fucking back? You're thirteen years old. Isn't you? You're still <laughs> old. Oh, I'm not old. You're still old. He's he's, he's, cl he's closer to me than you oh are. That's what I mean. He's old. Maybe oh, you just look old. old. Your membership price. <laughs> <That's well -known. laughs> Bang! That's low enough. Bang. It's a good bit of sales technique there. Wow, I can't believe you just said that. That's fucking shampoo. Don't put me and you in the same category. I'd never put me and you in the same category. What? You're 35. 31. <laughs> You're 18 years old. Do you know how old he is? No, I don't give a fuck anymore. And if he's older, older than 40. 67. <laughs> 75 years old. He's got his pen This, this is weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Just fucking carry on. When you're my age, you'll hope that you'll look this good, mate. You'll hope that you'll look this good. <laughs> 67. <laughs> so, yeah, it's. Do, do you find that, like, people are using this kind of. I mean, because they've got that. They, they, they wouldn't say these things to no, your face. No. I don't care who they I've, are. They I've wouldn't. never, ever had, like, a single person come up to me and say anything negative. Whenever yeah. someone comes up to me, it's always positive. Literally, always. And then the amount of negativity you see. And even on not my own videos, you scroll through TikTok of anyone's videos. You look yeah. through the comment section, and it's. I think TikTok's the worst. It's yeah. absolutely it's very brutal. toxic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, I posted a video earlier of it, like uh, the gym. It's one of the gym funny videos, yeah. and some guy commented on it saying, "Oh, Stoke is rough as fuck." And, you said it's not in Stoke. And I was like, <laughs> "Well, <laughs> people don't. They don't know the don't difference, know do they?" And I just like commented. I was like. But Stoke's got some of the best gyms in the country. And he was like, I'd rather train in a bin. Train in a bin. Like, what, what kind of replies? And I was like, but the, the guy, this is someone that's on a hidden profile. There's no picture. Do you know what I mean? They're so, always an anonymous profile. Yeah, they're always. always. And I was like, well, if you've got something that you want to say that's genuine, the gym's in Chesterton. Come, come and see us. Come and see the gym bros. Come and say it to our face. Yeah. That's simple. Exactly. <laughs> Not hide behind a profile. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> so what about um what what would you say have been your highs and lows of making that leap and going like self employed, like working for yourself? I would say the, one of the highs is when you do in person stuff from the clients because obviously everything's online and so you don't necessarily build that relationship as well as you could if you were in person with someone like yeah. if you were PT and someone you'd see them in person every week when I do like client meetups I remember my first client meetup um there was like 10 lads that were there I was like yeah. I did not expect 10 10 people to come out of the way travel all the way I, I did it to um, Ultraflex Rotherham I've watched it yeah yeah and I was like gassed I was like this is fucking sick like I can get 10 lads together who are all working towards the same thing and they all will then now follow each other on social media they'll yeah. comment on each other's posts and stuff like that they'll speak to each other um, outside of just me coaching them which is very cool so I'd say that's one of the highs the photo shoot I did as well yeah that was really good that was insane very good experience for and all the lads loved it as well um, and then in terms of lows I'd say the main thing 
about not just coaching but working for yourself is the uncertainty. Mm-hmm. You've always got that feeling of like, am I going to have to give it up or at one point yeah. go and do a normal job like a nine to five? Um, I've got better at that. Into like you're never going to get rid of that insecurity, that that fear. Um, but yeah, it is something which you get used to. And initially, the first couple of years, it's like you lose a couple of clients. You're like shit, like I'm not. This is just yeah. going to the ground here. Is everyone going to leave? It is. It is difficult. I've I've been for exactly the same myself. So we're like the gym now, which one one of my businesses is like coming up to seven years uh, old this year. And when I started it, I started it with everything I had, and it had it literally had to work. I didn't have a, a backup plan. I didn't have a fallback. I worked in the business for two and a half years for free, um, you know, in order to make it to make it work, and and constantly pushed and reinvested back into it. But for me. And I had this conversation with my dad. So my dad is very traditional. So he was, you get you, you, you get an education, you get a job, you work there for 30 years, you get your pension, you know, you leave. And he always used to say to me, I don't know how you sleep at night not knowing where your next yeah. pay is going to come from. And I, I take it you'll, you'll sometimes probably go through yeah. the same process. But for me, and I'm sure it is with yourself, I think it drives you. I think it makes you... Yeah, want to go out and do more you could quite easily have 20 quiet clients and sit on your yeah. levels that's the thing oh. it's it's however you look at it you could look at it as yes 10 clients could leave tomorrow but you could sign up 10 clients you could sign up however many you wanted it depends on how hard you're willing to yeah. work essentially and um, which is tough to take on mentally initially because your your income could fluctuate so much from month to month yeah and obviously with online coaching a lot of people usually in the winter aren't really looking yeah, to get yeah. in shape. And so you will just naturally get fluctuations, but it is mental, like how much it can change. So it's, that's the fitness. And we, we see that in the gym. Like we, we have peaks and troughs and you find that people will get in shape for summer. So it'll be really busy leading up. Then over summer, it kind of, you die off a little bit because people have got other priorities. And then it picks back up again after summer. And then it drops off again at Christmas because people have got other priorities. You know, their money is important to spend on christmas presents or summer holidays for the family and stuff so you're always going to get that but i think if you can get to a level where you're consistent yeah. you know that you're able to cover all your overheads and stuff yeah. then you take advantage you have a rainy day fund you make sure you keep some money back to yeah. see you through the the quieter months and stuff that's what that's one thing i've always made sure to do keep money aside yeah and that because i hate just i can get some people will say I've got two pounds in my bank account. I'm like, how the fuck do you... Like, yeah. That would stress me out. <laughs> and I remember yeah. the feeling of that, of having yeah. no money. So I always now make sure to leave because you know how much it can fluctuate. Yeah. And I hate having no money. It just stresses me the fuck out. I'm sure everyone does, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. No, it's exactly the same. What about... You got any, anything you want to ask? Anything yeah, I think, I think one thing for me... Um, obviously, the lad uh, in the group chat that, you know, spell uh, bell end. Straight away. <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> It was actually any of the other day. Happy days, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, but yeah, um, one for me was like, so obviously you're a coach, but what do you think your clients mainly get from you that say they wouldn't get from another coach? What's like your sort of niche? It's like USP. That yeah. You're putting out. I think the one thing which a lot of people find the most valuable is there's so much information out there nowadays, especially on like TikTok and stuff, which younger lads are constantly scrolling through and everyone's got an opinion. Everyone's got a piece of knowledge. Everyone's telling you should do this, you should do that. So for them to come to someone who they know has got the knowledge and, you know, an actual degree, anything that's qualified, has got the experience and has done it themselves, for them to just go, you need to do this, 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 follow this plan, do that, and you'll get what the results you're looking for. I'd say that's probably... Yeah, yeah, why they come to me. But Sweet. also things like they can talk to me. It's like a support system as well. I've got lads who I've been very close to and I've been sort of like one of the main people that will tell. But like I've got clients who just started a uni course and he's like, you're the first person I've told. And I'm like, that's mental. Yeah. So I think you find, like I've noticed that with like a lot of your followers, you, you become more than just coaching them in their fitness you become more like a lifestyle coach as well. And you're kind of there to give that supporting network. And I think that's, that's key to building, building you. And that's what gets you the loyalty. Yeah. I think when I first started at the, what I thought was unique about me was I watched a lot of like hardcore bodybuilders 
and like people who went very, very in depth and intricate with all the details and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But at the same time, I wasn't, I wasn't a bodybuilder, like quote unquote. Yeah. If you get what I mean, I was just a normal lad. But I had all that knowledge, and that was, I feel like, the USP which I've got. Yeah. A lot more relatable than bodybuilders. Just. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You, like I, I really liked the fact when you made that decision to compete. And I was like, well, this is a guy that's willing to put his business and his reputation and his knowledge on the line and prove that he can walk the walk as well as talk the talk. Because of a lot of online coaches that won't do that. Yeah. So all respect to you, I followed, I followed your journey. I'd seen you training in here and at the other gyms and stuff, and we, we followed you. Stop. And I think I said to you, didn't I, like, credit where credit's due. I think you've done really, really good. Yeah. Um, and you did something which which I did as well so when I decided I wanted to compete. So I had all the knowledge and I've got the qualification and everything. But I think you made the right decision as in you hired a coach to help you. And I did it because that person will see things in your physique which you won't see. Yeah, um, definitely. I'd never done that before. I can yeah. have all the knowledge in the world. Actually stepping on stage, getting into that condition, I've never done. So obviously that's why I got hired someone, a coach. And also because... I believe in coaching in terms of what coaching yeah. is, you know, the accountability side of things. Like I tried to do a mini course this time last year and even me as a coach, I, I didn't end up doing it. I wasn't doing my steps. And I was being lazy, not doing shit. So I know the effect of having someone yeah. keeping you accountable can have on the results you got. It is. I think a lot of people, they have the, like the basic knowledge they know how to train in the gym and everything. But I think it is that accountability yeah. that people want and that's, that's invaluable. And then, that's what a lot of people will pay for. And then it's the extras that they get, which is what will make you an exceptional coach and yeah. make your business grow. I definitely think that the base level of most people starting the gym now is probably higher than it used to be. Yeah. You know, previously, the only way you would get knowledge is like magazines and men's health and stuff like that. Because I remember yeah. being a kid, like you'd see Ryan Terry on the front of a men's health and he's got yeah. his, his ab workouts. So you'd copy his ab workouts. Yeah. And then it wouldn't necessarily work for you because he's Ryan Terry and that's why yeah, he got his abs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, his genetics are different. It was the same with me. It was like Flex Magazine and uh, Muscle and Fitness. They were the ones you would get. You got anything you want to want to add? You're very Something quiet. Like the football, the football stuff. Yeah. I didn't really touch on that much. You said, you, said you, you got let go of it. You said... Pick that mic up. I want to hear your beautiful voice. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> you said that's why you were, uh, you, you got let go. That's why you, you sort of, you know I mean? You got, yeah. Yeah, it was. It sucks. I remember at Liverpool, um, I had someone who was, because obviously a lot of the lads at Liverpool were Scousers, were from Liverpool, um, and I was from Stoke. I had the guy who was sort of like overseeing everything. He would speak to my mum quite often. I remember him ringing up. Uh, my mum, when I was on my six-week trial, and like saying to him, the coaches have said he needs to be more aggressive because like fifty-fifties and stuff like that. I used to be such a pussy, like I yeah. used to pull out of all. Maybe being smaller, yeah. I just pull out of. I'm always just scared of getting hurt, and then you're the same tall. thing. You're quite tall. No, this is the thing. I've I've always been quite small, and then so when I was at Stoke, they measure. They can measure like your, your tibia, tibia, yeah. Um, and that will tell you how tall you're going to be when you're older. And I remember the doctors told me that I was going to be six foot one. I am six foot one now. But at the time, <laughs> my parents were like, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No way. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. As if. Um, was it good? No, to be fair, when Paul was saying about you, you'd competed, that's like, it's massive because there's so many coaches out there that haven't even competed. Mm -hmm. And like, you've literally just admitted that you... As much as you're a coach, you've never been there. So you're basically like, well, how can I take someone there if I've never been there? Like you've just, you just admitted it then. It's like so many people would never admit that. We were talking about it yesterday. We, 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 actually, yeah, I, was we were, yeah. I was like, he's got fucking kids got balls. Yeah, because I, I knew that I would like to at one day potentially coach someone to the stage, but yeah. I was like, I'm not going to do that if I've never even done mm. it myself. It's, you can't relate to what someone, like, what, I mean. what yeah. they're going through. Mm. And it's like, it, it really, not just that, the relatability, but like knowing how to get there and, and everything. It's like, it, it takes on balls to just admit that. Yeah. And I think people should take note because getting to like a, a competitive physique or getting that lean, it fucking takes a lot. And it's not just a case, it's not just a standard diet. No, no, it's like not. what you're taking your clients through. It's, it's so much more, isn't it? Yeah. It's so much more, it's, it's full it's, robot. It, it's it like, literally 
takes over your entire yeah, yeah. life. Like by the end of my prep, yeah. my missus genuinely said to me, she was like, it's like being with a robot. Like mm. you, yeah. you switch off all your emo emotions to everything else mm -hmm. and everything has to be a, like focused around that, your entire day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, focused for, on For a long time as well. Yeah. It's four or five months of just pure dedication where nothing else matters, which uh, I genuinely did enjoy it. Like I loved every fucking second of it. But then as soon as I came out of it, then I was like, shit, I can't. Some of the stuff I was doing, I was like, I can't believe that I was doing yeah. that stuff. So this is what I mean. This is what some people don't get. And I think it's nice seeing uh, from a coach actually go and do it. Yeah. And then hopefully in the future, maybe you can coach someone to. I don't think it's a, it's a prerequisite to be a good, a good coach. But I think it's one of them. Like for me, if I want a plumber to come to my house and do some plumbing, I don't want some guy who's just you read the, the plumber's best book. Plumber, you can have yeah. all the knowledge in the world. Yeah, yeah. I want some guy who's yeah. done like 10 years on the trade yeah, yeah, who yeah. knows what he's doing, who's gone through the whole process of fitting a bathroom or whatever. And I yeah, think man. it's a good advertisement. Like for a coach, if you've put yourself through, like you don't, you don't do like that at the moment, but I take it that's something you're wanting to move into coaching people coaching. at the stage. I've actually you... got uh, two clients. Okay, cool. <laughs> competing this year. I've got Brooklyn, who's going to be competing in men's physique. He's improved a shitload amount. Like, I can't even believe it. Um, and i got Rob, who's also going to be competing as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's good. Like, if, you've, if you put yourself through that process, you know how tough it's going to be. You've experienced it firsthand, the fatigue, the tiredness, how it affects your relationships, how it affects your work, yeah. how, if, how how you have to become so yeah. robotic and so self-centered and very selfish. And you've got to have a very understanding partner or family support network around you that have got to understand that for the next 16 weeks, you're going to be tired, grumpy, hungry, self-centered, you know, selfish, in order to achieve something which is just for, for personal gain yeah because they've got to know what they're going into yeah. and if i can preempt yeah. that and tell them you're going to feel like this this is what you've got to do and they say okay then, then sorry but then like, like you're like you just say when they're so far in and they're like oh, i feel like this you'll be like yeah you're supposed to instead of thinking yeah uh, are they supposed to feel like that <laughs> <laughs> am i killing them like yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah. <laughs> at least you'll have that that knowledge yeah. that you'll know that that's how they're yeah. supposed to be feeling yeah you know how they should look how they should feel everything because to get into that sort of condition you will at points look like absolute shit. Yeah, like, I remember your death, death face. There's a picture I put. <laughs> there's a picture I put on my story the other day, um, showing the last day before I started carving up before the British finals, and I literally looked well, like come out of outfits. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and then I showed a picture about four or five days later, and the difference is night yeah. and day. I think I got down down to seventy four kilos at my lowest, okay. which I did not expect to get that what, light. Did, what was your body fat? Did you ever have your body fat done or no? I didn't. But it Skeleton. will have been low. Yeah. yeah, it will have been single digits low, single digits. Hmm. Lowest I got when I competed once was four, four percent, and I couldn't walk. Yeah, I couldn't put my feet on on anything hard. I had to like have like the softest trainers right by my bed. Yeah. For like the, the two days leading up to the show, it was because it was just like bone. It's mental. I remember I went Nando's with Messi's and sat down, and the seat was wooden. <laughs> <laughs> was and bone on it. You hear bodybuilders talk about like it hurts to sit yeah. down, and then I was like, I can literally feel my ass bones yeah. like <laughs> never know. You feel like you're like in the seat. <laughs> oh, nothing there now. Uh, it's, uh... What would you? Um, what would if? So if we've got people watching this podcast and they're thinking of going down the route of working for themselves or maybe even starting a side hustle which they hope to maybe turn into something or they want to follow their their dream and turn it into a career what advice would you give them i would say the main one for me would be to invest in yourself i think a lot of people are scared to bet on themselves mm -hmm. essentially you've got to take the leap you've got to invest more. like i've literally got a note a note on my phone where from, I knew what I wanted to do and I wrote down every single piece of camera equipment, lens, lighting, software I needed. I taught myself on YouTube how to use a camera, how to edit on Final Cut Pro. And this was before I'd even started. Yeah. And a lot of people will do all that stuff, but then not actually start. So I had the plan in place and then I used my student loan, which I was getting, 
I put about two or three grand into buying everything because I had to buy a new laptop, like the whole, yeah. <laughs> the whole lot. The whole bank. Yeah. Um, and whenever I do something, I go all in on it. So I did that, and that's what I'll say is, yeah, invest in yourself. Knowledge as well. Don't be afraid to invest in coaches. I've had two different business mentors um, because there does reach a point where it is hard to, like if you don't know what it is that's yeah. growing it, and if you can get someone, it's the same as coaching. If you don't know how to get there, it's the same with a business. Hire someone who's been there and done it. Mm. Yeah. That's that's actually something yeah. I want to do. I'm looking to set up like another little business because I want to help people that want to take that jump and go self-employed. And I was like, well, I've got real world results. Like I took a derelict building and I've turned it into one of the biggest bodybuilding gyms in the UK. This is real. Yeah. You know, and the success that I've been able to have from it is all real. It's not fake. It's not people hiring stuff like they do on Instagram. It's genuinely real. And, a, and I have a passion to, to want to really help people. And there is a lot of fake, like, yeah. mentors and gurus out there. Yeah. Like, so many. Like, everyone thinks they can sell some sort of course <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or mentor someone. It's the same with coaching as well. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Um, I had a lad the other day who was, he was trying to give me advice on how to perform the pet deck. He replied to me stories like, you need to bend your elbows more. I was like, mate, I'm li like a coach. I, am. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Yeah. You've watched the YouTube video. <laughs> I'm but a it's coach. It's also not one tight fits all though, isn't it? No, it isn't. Some exactly. people's body mechanics are different. They yeah. might have to perform a move slightly different yeah. to hit like, that Obviously, muscle. Morgan's taller. You've got longer limbs than the average person. So there's exercises you're going to adapt to your same as yourself. Mm. You have to adapt. I have to fit in the fucking, fucking massive. <laughs> I'm I have that trouble all the time. We have to adapt the kit to fit him, not not the, the kit to fit the other way around. Yeah. Anything else you want to cover? Anything else you want to say? Um, I would say li literally just bet on yourself, like believe in yourself, because that is the one thing. Is I I feel like I was, especially at the start, like you 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 touched on earlier about how you had to make it work. Mm. I was the same. I was like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going all in on it. And I almost felt like at the start, I was like a pressure cooker. I wanted, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I knew how to fucking do it and literally just went all in on it. Um, a few factors as well, I think, which actually helped me. So I got kicked out by my mum during COVID, which sounds like a huge setback, but I actually think I wouldn't be where I am today if it didn't happen. Point, yeah. Because I was living in my granddad's, I was in this tiny little box room, the spare room with pink wallpaper with a little chandelier above the bed, <laughs> single bed. Um, and I was like, I am fucking working myself out of this. Yeah. And all I did was work, work, work 24 seven. And it got me to where I am. I think that's that's a good attitude to have. That's something I've always had. So it's, we, we were talking about this the other week. Someone said to me, oh, you always get your own way. Everything always works out for yeah. you. And I was like, it doesn't. It's just... I don't bury my head and look at it in a bad way. As like, something goes wrong, well, I can sit and cry about it or I can just fucking move on and try and make it work. Yeah. It's, it's even, got nothing to do with getting your own way. It's just sitting around crying about it, sulking that this has happened. Like, just, you could have done, oh, woe is me, I've been kicked out, this, that, and the other. Whoa. You did it and you thought, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself out of this situation. Yeah. How am I going to do it? This is how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to give 110% until I do it. And that's exactly what you've done. It's yeah. having that positive mental attitude and that determination. Sitting there and being a victim is not going to achieve anything. Going out there and taking some proactive action yeah. is what's going to get you the things that you want. I'm being stubborn as well. I'm naturally very, very... <laughs> so if I say I'm going to do something, I always do it. People say a similar thing to me, you always get your own way. Yeah. Because I will literally not give up until I get it. Like If I have something which sets me back, it's a setback. It's not, oh, I'm going to give up. It's a failure. Yeah. Or oh, I've made a video, didn't get many views or whatever. It's just, oh, you make the next one. You yeah. go again. It's not a failure, it's a learning exercise. Exactly. Whatever didn't work on that one, you would change, you would adapt, yeah. and you move forward. People fail because they're not persistent enough yeah That's people, people will fail. fail and then they'll yeah. go i'm not doing that it's too anybody hard. that is successful has been persistent yeah. has had setbacks oh my god the amount of times i failed over the mm. years is ridiculous That's what I mean, it's yeah. not failure it's a learning exercise keep yeah. going keep going people just give up and go ah, fuck it yeah excellent so it's been an absolute pleasure having you on morgan pleasure. we will put your social media tags up on the podcast and what people got to do like comment and subscribe thank you very much guys